Hi, I'm Jeff Peterson. I'm going to show you how I bleed the brakes on my mountain bike using a vacuum pump. I just put these Hayes Prime brakes on the front of my mountain bike. I wanted to route the brake line through the fork here, so I disconnected the banjo fitting here, ran it through, reconnected the banjo fitting, and I lost some fluid and got some air in the lines. Now I need to bleed the brakes. I bought online a brake bleeding kit specific to Hayes. It comes with two syringes like this uh, with a special fitting custom to Hayes. It's got a little O-ring here. And if you have Shimano, you'll need a different fitting here. You'll have to buy the variety of bleed kit that's specific to your brakes. Okay, I am uh, going to use only one syringe and I'm not going to use the plunger a little bit at the end, I will, but mostly I'm going to use uh, this um, rubber stopper. That's a number four rubber stopper with a single hole in it. You can buy these online. I drilled the hole myself in this one because I didn't uh, want to wait online to get one with a hole. Uh, and I'm going to put that in here and use a vacuum pump uh, to remove the air from the system. Now first you have to take out the uh, bleed fitting uh, with a T10 um, wrench. Oh, there it is, coming out, and you don't want to lose this. I'll put it here in my little magnetic keeper and put the bleed fitting on there. Uh, good. Okay. Um, let's see. Yeah, ah, that's pretty good. Now I'm going to put some brake fluid here into the syringe. This is a DOT4 brake brake fluid, which is what um, Hayes wants. And uh, if you use Shimano, you'll probably uh, you'll need to use mineral oil instead. But um, got about uh, nine cc's of of brake fluid there. Uh, this is the vacuum pump down here is the vacuum pump I'm going to use. Uh, this is an inexpensive Chinese made vacuum pump. It is a uh, liquid filled vacuum pump, not a dry one. You've got the sight glass here showing liquid. And that means that it can come down to a pressure of 10 microns or 100 microns about, which is one ten thousandth of atmospheric pressure once it reaches its ultimate vacuum. That's going to expand the air in the system by 10,000 times, allowing it to come out uh, uh, into the vacuum pump. So I'm putting the uh, hose on there. I don't need a tight seal here. Uh, we don't need a perfect vacuum to make this work. And attaching it to the uh, syringe here, and I'm ready to uh, turn on the vacuum. Uh, before I do that, let me just explain. I do have some air in the line here. Now that's going to expand and come up through the uh, uh, brake fluid and it's going to bubble and foam and also any air that's in the system in the reservoir or at the banjo fitting is going to expand and come out. So you're going to see this foam up with the air that's in the system. So here we go, turning on the pump. <laughs> There's a little bit of air coming up through here, creating some foam here in the reservoir. And I'm going to tap it a little bit, try to get those bubbles to come up to the top. Now I don't worry if I have a few bubbles left here, because those bubbles have been expanded to 10,000 times their original size. They'll shrink back down again if, as they go back in. I want to get as much air as I can out. I'm going to wiggle the brake lever a little bit here to kind of move the fluid around a little bit. Try to get some more to come out, more bubbles to come up. Uh, that's about all I'm getting, just a little bit. Okay, uh, turn the pump off now, and we're going to see the level fall. And that's the uh, spring in the haze system pushing the caliper pucks uh, uh, back out. Um, back into place. So I did uh, use a little fluid here. It's down a little lower. Uh, let me do it again. 
uh, the levels coming up as the pucks are getting sucked into the caliper body. But uh, no air coming out this time, right? Because I've already removed all the air in the first pass. Well, that's all I need to do. I'm done. And we'll let this come back down again. And the spring is pushing the brake pads apart. Um, well, actually probably pulling them together at this point. Okay, so it's down to about eight cc's, I would say. And now, uh, looking down at the calipers, I do see a lot of space between the brake pads and the rotor. And that's because the um, pucks have been sucked into the body of the uh, caliper. And so I'm going to use the plunger here to, to put a little pressure in to push those back uh, towards the rotor, tighten them up a little bit. So I'm just now pushing a little bit more fluid into the system here. Just push hard here for a second here and wait. And maybe do the lever a little bit. Right, see if we can get a little more fluid in there. And I did succeed at getting a little more fluid in there, several cc's more, right? Now it's down to about seven. I got another couple cc's of fluid in there. Okay, uh, we're done now uh, bleeding the brakes. So let me uh, get rid of the extra fluid back into my um, can. Just pour that back in here into the can to avoid making a mess. Let's get as much as we can. There's a little left here in the plastic tubing. I'll just collect that with a paper towel. There we go, wipe up any little spills. And I can put the plug back in now. It doesn't need to be tight, just a little twist. All right, let's see how we've done here. Yeah, that's pretty good. That's pretty good. Um, I like it a little tighter, maybe. A little tighter, a little bit. Yeah, that's good. Let's just see how it's working. Yeah, very rigid. So we're done. That's all there is to it.